Welcome back to another exciting episode of SibDig. We've got our nice green background behind us again because overall we had a positive 30 days in the market. Stocks only go up. But before we get into the SibDig, let's talk about strategy this month. None of which should be taken for as financial advice, of course. First up, let's talk Weeble, because I had mentioned before that I was going to sell off the dividend stocks that I have in Weeble and put them into my Robinhood portfolio because you can't buy fractional shares on Weeble. I actually decided to just hold on to them for now just to avoid any tax implications by selling them off. So I'm not buying any more, I'm just holding on to them. What I have been doing is when I get a dividend in Weeble is actually buying a fractional share in Robinhood because they are still companies I want to invest in, that fractional shares is really just the kicker. And when I buy it in Robinhood, I can just quickly compound those dividends and grow my portfolio more. Weeble is my more speculative portfolio. So again, I do still have some non-dividend payers that are considered risky, but I think they have some potential. There is this difference between investing versus speculating. It's kind of what Benjamin Grabs, the intelligent investor, really hits on. So I do also have $10.50 in uninvested cash on Weeble. So I'm looking for, again, a risky play to throw that into. So if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Next, I committed the cardinal sin of long-term investors and I sold a stock. I sold out of my position in Starbucks. I only had 1.01 .01 shares and I've been thinking of consolidating some stocks in my portfolio for a while and Starbucks was on the chopping block. I've been in the red around $10 on my average cost of Starbucks, but in the last week, it's come back up to around that average cost, and it's on par with VYM, which is Vanguard's high dividend ETF. So I sold off my Starbucks, bought a share of VYM, which gives me a little more diversified fund and a little bit better dividend yield. Not before I collected Starbucks dividend for August, of course, though. I do still have some exposure to Starbucks though because I do have 0.011 shares in Bumped, which I'll link that video I did on the Bumped app up here. So anytime I do splurge on Starbucks, I at least get a little bit of a kickback in Starbucks stock. Please don't be mad at me, Graham. Something exciting that happened this month was I got two free stocks thanks to people using my Robinhood referral link, which you can do as well in the description below and get your own free stock. So I got one share of PSEC worth $5.14 and one share of VBIV worth $3.29. Like I said before, when I get free stocks, I just sell them off right away just because they're companies I generally don't want to track and I can just put that money in a fractional share in a dividend payer. But I am holding on to my share of PSEC. Since I already have one share of PSEC in Weeble, I figure I can hold one in Robinhood as well. Since it didn't cost me anything and they pay a decent enough dividend, just gonna ride this one out. As far as VBIV goes, I did sell that off as soon as it settled into my account. But should I have? Right after I sold it, it jumped up a dollar because VBIV is a vaccine company and the vaccine company had something to say about you know what. Some good news, so they jumped up a little bit. Since then it has gone down, so it's about 50 cents more than when I sold it. So again, I just sell them off because they're companies I don't want to keep track of, even if they do have little bits of good news like that. Just get them out of sight, out of mind, put them into a dividend payer, and forget about it. So thank you for those of you who signed up with my Robinhood referral link. And again, if you want your own free stock, link in the description. Last but not least, in August, we had news that just rattled the stock market with stock splits from Apple and Tesla. I do own both these companies, but this stock split really doesn't change my ownership in them at all. Watch my video in the corner here that I just did that explains that. Time for the meat and potatoes of this video, which you all have so patiently been waiting for. The stocks I bought and dividends I got in August. But before we do that, go ahead and YouTube mumbo jumbo that subscribe button, that like button, and that bell notification for me. Got it? Good. Let's start with the stocks I bought. On the second, I bought $5 of SPHD and $5 of Microsoft. On the third, $5 of Verizon and $4 of AT&T. On the fifth, $3.12 of SPHD. On the 7th, 
$10 of Spy D. On the 10th, I threw a couple bucks into my Fang T. Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and Tesla all got $2. On the 14th, $10.98 to Northwest Energy and $5 to Apple. On the 16th, $46.45 to Realty Income and $5 to Main Street Capital. On the 18th, $14 to Procter & Gamble and $26.16 to SPHD. On the 24th, $9 to VYM. On the 28th, $9.98 to SCHD. And on the 31st, $83.93 to VYM when I sold off that Starbucks stock to buy VYM. So in total, I spent $252.62 on stocks this month. The more exciting part, which is that sweet, sweet passive income from dividends. On the first, I got 10 cents from new residential investments, seven cents from Gladstone investments, and $1.05 from SPHD. On the third, 68 cents from Verizon. On the fourth, $1.72 from AT&T. On the 11th, 12 cents from AGNC. On the 13th, 86 cents from Apple. On the 14th, 42 cents from Main Street Capital and $1.03 from Realty Income. On the 17th, 16 cents from Procter & Gamble. On the 19th, 31 cents from Energy Transfer. On the 22nd, 41 cents from Starbucks. Collected that dividend before I sold it, suckers. Those are the dividends that I got in my Robinhood portfolio. I also got a few in Weeble. On the third, I got 52 cents from AT&T. On the 20th, six cents from PSEC. And on the 31st, 19 cents from LTC properties. So all in all, I got $7.70 in dividends in August. Overall, a pretty solid month of stocks I bought and dividends I got. I'm pretty excited because this is the most I've received in one month in dividend income. And considering I only started thinking about investing about a year ago, it's pretty cool to see this growth and all the work and money that I'm putting into this come to fruition. September is already shaping up to be even bigger than August with all the dividend notifications I've received. So I'm gonna ask you one more time to YouTube mumbo jumbo that subscribe button so you don't miss Sibdig September. I mean, come on, you gotta love alliteration. Let me know in the comments below what your Sibdig was this month. Thanks for watching and let's continue to climb this beanstalk. is getting too long.